The very first version of this model was released in 2002. Fast forward to 2019 and this is the latest version, the Senebogen 5500G series. The box sleeve is Senebogen branded and there's some information about the real machine printed on it. And the first thing we see when we go inside is the instruction sheet. This is very detailed with lots of photos and text. And there's also a parts list. But some of the reaving diagrams are very small and difficult to read. The written instructions are in English and German. Here we see a pair of expanded polystyrene trays and if we separate them we see that both the top and bottom are packed full of parts. The latest version of the real crane has 12 counterweight blocks and this model comes with two extra ones. But for some reason they're just stuffed loosely in the box rather than being protected so they might easily get damaged during shipping. To begin the assembly here is the body of the crane out of the box and the first thing we'll do is open up the outrigger beams. These allow the crane to stand on its own four feet when it's not connected to tracks. And the pads are just on simple screw threads. So the first thing to do is just to screw those in. These jacks on the real crane allow it to jack itself up on and off of transport. Out of the box the luffing winch drum has nothing on it. But two of the other drums do have rope on and for some reason one drum is unlucky. So let's help it out and rope is supplied on a separate reel. And to wind the rope on the first thing we need to do is to tie it off on the drum. And then use the supplied key to start winding the rope on. Sometimes life is just too short so we can use an electric drill to speed things up. Reeving up the luffing gear is a more complex operation. And here we've stood up the big A-frame and secured it to the boom to stop it moving. You end up with one continuous length of rope that gets tied off at both ends to the winch drum. So a temporary arrangement is set up just to do the reeving. The A-frame is at its maximum forward position. So once the reeving's done we just tie both loose ends off on the drum. One tiny improvement on this latest version of the model is an unsilvered mirror for the cab. And it's not obvious how much cost is saved by not having it silvered. It clips into place on the metal grab rail. Now we can get on with the big stuff and we can add on the crawler tracks. And the track frames are just a push fit connection onto the crane. Next up we can add on the counterweight tray. And we use the giant hand cranes to offer it up and then insert a long plastic pin. The real crane can lift up its own counterweight tray and the mechanism for doing this is modelled in a non-functional way. The lift cylinders with their lifting chains are just pushed down into position. We load up the counterweight tray with all of the blocks including the slightly larger new piece. The boom sections are all separate and realistically sized and they join together in the old fashioned way for Conrad models and that's using plastic pins. This is effective but not quite as nice as using small nuts and bolts. The pendant bars for holding up the boom and jib are all strong plastic parts. And they also fit together with plastic bolts. The system works well from a structural point of view. But is perhaps over large from a modelling point of view. With the boom and pendant bars all assembled we can lift the boom and attach the pendant bars to the A-frame. Again this is a simple pinned connection. With all that done we can now start to use the crane and winch up the boom. We're only rigging the main boom at the moment so we need to install the plastic pulleys that fit in at the top. And once that's done we can add on the single pulley hook and that completes this stage of the assembly. The crawler tracks are mounted on fairly simple frames and there are no working rollers on the top or bottom. But there is some simple detailing such as steps. The crawler tracks themselves are plastic and the colour match of them is very good. The modelling of the jacks is simple and the screw threads are a little bit unsightly. 
The major upgrade on this model is the cab, its metal, and there's some nice detailing. The large textured walkway remains the same. The decoration on the body has some small graphics and highlighting of the panel handles. And the Senebogen 5500G graphics are very sharp. Up on top there's nice texturing, but no handrails. The individual counterweight slabs have usable lifting eyes. The lifting gear has chains, but they can't be connected to the counterweight tray. And the pinned counterweight tray hasn't improved, and it still rocks on its pin. The new larger counterweight block is modelled, but the chevrons are not as sharp. And the holes for the winch key remain undisguised. There are very nice metal pulleys used, but there's no equaliser arrangement on the pendant bars. The luffing backstops still have the springs visible, rather than having them inside the cylinders. At the boom top, the big plastic pulleys are unchanged, so they don't roll very freely. And the simple hook is still the same, with its plastic pulley inside. And that was not free rolling on the review model. The luffing jib gear is simple, but it looks good. But you do have to improvise with regards to the tying off point for the rope. The luffing restraint ropes weren't quite the right length on the review model, but they look okay. And at the top of the luffing jib, there's a plastic Cenobogan sign and the pulleys are metal. One very good feature of the model is that the various parts can make good transport loads. And we start with the main body of the crane, although the walkway outside the cab is a bit too wide and really needs to be foldable. The other parts also make good loads. Plastic tracks on the crawler frames actually roll quite nicely, and surprisingly, even on a smooth surface, they do a good job at rolling along. Rotation of the crane is very good, it's very smooth and there's no rocking. And some parts, like the luffing winch, work very well on the model, and here the smooth rolling metal pulleys certainly help. The same can't be said of the hook though. And there's just too much friction in the pulleys for anything to work properly. And it's a pity that Conrad didn't upgrade the hook on this model. The cab is on a mechanism that moves out from the body, and it also tilts to a very steep angle. But again, there's no improvement to the mechanism because the cab is too loose when it's horizontal. So it droops down a bit. You can extend the main boom by using some luffing jib sections. And that's a nice bit of flexibility because that gives you a different way of displaying the model. Or if you want to go the whole way you can fit the luffing jib. And it would have been nice if dolly wheels had been fitted at the jib head. To reeve up the luffing gear you need to rig up a temporary arrangement and here that's been done with string. But for some reason Conrad didn't put enough rope on the winch drum to allow the A-frames to be reeved at full separation. To get to the luffing winch drum you need to temporarily remove some of the counterweight and you have to use the key to displace the axle inside the drum. But the good news is the friction in the system is low so unwinding the drum does lower the luffing jib. Fully assembled, this is quite a large crane model, so let's do a dim check. And to the top of the luffing jib, it's about 45 inches or 115 centimeters. This model by Conrad appeared in its first version in about 2002, and it's still a nice looking model. But it is sad that Conrad did not improve the model more with this update. Some low cost changes could have made it a more modern model, but even so it's still a nice looking crane and overall it's good. Mm -hmm. 